So what we're going to do here is take the Studio A floor plan and we're going to put a simple interview set on the floor plan and then we're going to light it. Obviously you can extrapolate what we're going to do here to uh, a set as complicated as you want to put in the studio. And I guess we have to ask ourselves where are we going to put the set pieces on this floor plan? So let's have a look at Gerald Millerson's wonderful drawing here uh, in terms of lamp distance. And you'll notice that for a 12 foot grid, or at least a light that's about 12 feet in the air, a 45 degree angle, which of course is the recommended angle to put light down on somebody, in a sitting position, is going to fall right about here. Well, where is here? Let's just draw a little arrow down to the bottom. And the distance that the lamp has to be from the person who is sitting with a 12 foot light fixture, 12 feet up in the air, is about 9 feet. So that means that we want to put our fixtures roughly nine feet away from the people on the set. Let's go back to our floor plan for a second and let's count up nine feet away from the back of the site because if we did want to hang a light on the back grid bar at the back near the psych, we'd want the set about nine feet away from the cyclorama. So here's our starting point here. And this is four feet up. Obviously, as you'll remember, the grid bars are four feet away from each other. And that's eight feet up. So we need to go just a little bit more. Nine feet's where we're supposed to be. Let's just go up a little bit more. Let's call it, let's make it 10 feet. So there's the 10 foot mark right there. That's where we will put the people who are sitting in the chairs. So I'm just going to put an arrow over there on the left hand side just to indicate that because we're going to use that as a guide while we put the set pieces on the floor right now. The first thing I'm going to put in here is a table. It's an oblong oval sort of table. It's four feet long and about two feet across. And I've drawn it to scale because I know the scale on this floor plan. Each one of those grid bars is four feet. So I was able to draw a table that was roughly four feet along and two feet in the other dimension. So we'll put the table just ahead of where the people are going to sit. My little arrow shows me where the people are going to sit. So I'm going to put that table just in front of them. I'm going to add the first chair on the left here, and you'll notice I have left enough leg room for the person to sit. Not right next to the table, but perhaps, but because that chair is on a 45 degree angle, by the time that person kind of curls over and looks at the other person, their legs are going to be on the left hand side of the chair, and there's probably a good foot of, of space in there. So we don't want them too close to the table, but we don't want them miles away from the table either. And we'll just add in the second chair here, and we want them equidistant apart from one another, 45 degrees, so they can look each other in the eye as they carry on an interview conversation. And that's our basic set. Let's add a little bit of extra decoration to the set. I'll put a plant up here. This is a this plant's about four feet in diameter because it's bushy and it bushes out around four feet around. And we'll kind of just put it behind one of the chairs just to make things a little bit prettier. And if I add a second plant here, oh, I don't know, it kind of looks like too much like people sitting between two ferns. So let's get rid of that one plant and uh, just go with the one plant on the right hand side. So there's our set piece. And now at this point I can get rid of this green arrow that was our reference guide. That was just for us to give some perspective to where things should sit on the set. And that's our set on the floor right now. Very simple, very straightforward. And now we're going to go off and light that set. Now, what do these fixtures look like? Well, there's a standard template that's used for what lighting fixtures look like in television lighting. And it looks something like this. This is an old school plastic template that you would actually put down on your floor plan and just trace inside these little holes for these various symbols. We're going to use the one that says source four on the top row in the center. That's our, uh, our ellipsoidal projector spotlight. And we're going to use that for a couple of things a little bit later on. Over on the right, you can see we've got Fresnels. That's the standard workhorse light that we use in television. And they throw a fairly uh, sharp shadow. They're a focused light, so we're going to use those. And then on the second row, you see a thing that says BP and scoop. These are soft lights. We're going to take a 10 inch broad light. We're going to use that as the fill light. Further below the BP and the scoop section is a thing that says strips. Those are strip lights. We're going to use a couple of those for psych lights. So you can see there's four fixtures we're going to use off this template. The source four for some highlights. The Fresnel spotlight on the right hand side that we're going to use for basically our key lights. And we're going to fill in with that uh, broad scoop fixture halfway down the, the template. And then I'm also going to use those psych strips down at the bottom to light up the cyclorama with a solid color. So let's dig in. So let's go back to our floor plan for a moment. And you can see that I'm going to need to put a Fresnel light about nine feet away from the person on the right. So nine feet away is about as long as that arrow is right there. And I'm going to have that Fresnel light do double duty. I'm going to use it as the key light for that person. And I'm also going to use it as the backlight for the other person as well. So there it is in place. And it'll be able to light the backlight and the key light of those two people. 
Well, if I've got one on this side, clearly I can put one on the other side that does exactly the same thing, except in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to draw in a couple of rays of light here, and as I do that, you can see that that one Fresnel light is indeed going to do two things. It's going to be the key light for the person that's farthest away from the Fresnel, and it's also going to serve as the backlight from the person who is more close to the Fresnel. And if I draw on the rays for the other light, you'll see exactly the same things happening, except opposite. It's going to be the backlight for the person closest to it, and the key light for the person who is furthest away. So there's my key light and my backlight with just two lights. We've saved a, a couple of fixtures already. Let's add in the fill light. Now, I said I was going to use one of those broad lights, and ideally it should be about nine feet away from the two people. And if the broad light is very strong, if it's a very powerful light, I can get away with using one broad light, as you see here. However, these things tend to have a fairly quick fall off. They're lovely soft light. They do a wonderful job filling in on people's faces, but the fall off on that light is fairly quick. The light dims quickly away from the fixture. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to use two of these broad lights, one for each of the individuals that are on the set. So I still have a little bit more lighting to add, although right now I've lit the people who are sitting in the interview fairly well. The first thing I'm going to add are these cyclorama lights. I'm going to put them near the back. They can be quite steep. They don't have to be nine feet away from the cyclorama because it's not a person. It's just a big flat white wall. So I'm going to put them only about four feet away from the cyclorama. I'm going to point them down. I've got two strips there which should cover a fair bit of the cyclorama. So I should be able to wash the background cyclorama with a nice big solid color of light based on whatever color gels I put in those cyc lights or those strip lights. But a basic colored wash is kind of boring, so I'm going to add a pattern projector here, one of the Source 4s, and I'm going to put it through a cookie, and it's going to put a nice pattern, uh, some kind of stripe or streak, or maybe some clouds or something gentle on the backdrop. So now I've got the solid color from the psych lights that are now being broken up by this white light of this soft pattern that I'm putting through the pattern projector. I'm going to use another pattern projector to light the plant on the ground. Again, you'll notice it's quite steep. It's not 90 feet away. But what that does is that puts some really nice shadows on the plant. The leaves of the plant drop shadows on the leaves below it on the plant and so on. So it actually adds a nice little three-dimensional effect to the plant. So you don't have to put that light so far away. But now that plant's going to have a lot of detail in it. At this point, I've now lit the set. I've got the fixtures in place on the grid. But you'll notice something as I've put all these fixtures on the grid. They are all actually on the grid lines themselves. You can, this is where they're all going to hang on the grid. And if I add the grid lines to it, just to make the point, you can see that they are indeed all hanging on grid lines. Now, this is an important thing to remember. Do not hang your lights on the boxes where the pigtails come out. Those are not places to hang lights. Lights go on the grid lines, and the pigtail bars are how you're going to get your electricity. So having said that, the last thing that we have to do is we actually have to plug these fixtures in to different pigtails. So I'm going to plug in the left psych light on the pigtail number three. I'm going to plug the right psych light on, into pigtail number two. The pattern projector that's going to project that pattern into the psych lighting, pigtail 31. Uh, the one backlight key light will be in number eight. The other one's going to be in number 11. The uh, pattern projector that actually projects a nice shadowy light down on the plant is going to be plugged into number 42. And the two soft lights that serve as the fill lights for these people are going to be in pigtails 51 and number 50. Now you're going to use these numbers in another way. You're going to create what's called a pigtail list. This is because not every pigtail that's in the grid is actually already attached to a dimmer and eventually you are indeed going to want to dim these lights up and down to adjust them, to fine tune them. So you're going to take these numbers and you're going to generate this thing called a pigtail list, which looks something like this. You can see pigtail number two is the psych light on the right. Pigtail number three is the psych light on the left. Eight is the host back and the guest key. Eleven is the guest back and the host key. And so on and so on and so on. You'll hand this pigtail list to your lab assistant, who will make sure that the pigtails actually will have electricity running through them when you actually light your set. So that's basically how you take a predetermined set that's put into Studio A, and B, or C, and you light it in a very straightforward fashion using the 9-foot rule in this case, because the lights are about 12 feet off the grid. Some of those distances will change, of course, if people are standing and walking around. But in this particular case, we just had two people sitting down. So with that primer, you should now be able to go off and design your own lighting plan.